Heavenly Father, we ask a blessing on the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit be our guide today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Doctrines of Salvation, Part 18. I know we're going on this uh, quite a while, but I hope you're still enjoying it. Uh, this one we're just calling Look and Live. Justification by faith in what Jesus did, turning only to him, recognizing that he's all of it, we're none of it, putting our trust and our faith only in Jesus Christ. Numbers 21.6, the people of Israel were under judgment. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Only faith in gazing upon a brass serpent on the pole did the person live. They would look, and if they looked, they lived. If they didn't look, they died. Now, somebody's going to say, but they had to come to Moses. Well, Moses is a type of the mediator. Who's the mediator that we need to come to? And that's Jesus Christ. So they had a change of mind coming to Moses, the mediator. Who, what, who do we need to have a change of mind about? Jesus Christ. We need to have a change of mind and come only to him and put our faith and trust only in him. But it's simply by looking to him that we live. Now, can I show that in the New Testament? Well, Jesus referred to it. John 3, 14, he said, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now, after that, there's a colon, meaning this next passage is relating to, that Old Testament type to the New Testament reality. John 3.15. This one should get more uh, publicity. It says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Okay. Following John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So what is salvation? Belief in Jesus. Trusting him. Now, no, I'm not talking a mere intellectual ascent. 99% of the world believes there is a Jesus that exists. It's putting your trust in him. Believing in him. Believing in him for your salvation and him alone. Okay? Lord, lest I die, I need to look to who? You, I need to look to Jesus. So much as looking at that serpent, they had to trust that that was it. That's what they needed to do to be able to be healed of these serpent bites and not physically die. And when they looked, they lived. This is what a person needs to do upon salvation. They need to have a change of mind and say, you know what? It's not my religion. It's not this church. I have met so many people that think it's part of, if they left that church, they would not be saved. If you can't let go of that, you will never get saved because you aren't having a repentant mind about who Jesus is. You need to have a change of mind that Jesus is all of it. And if you look to him, you will live. That would not be repentance unto life because you don't have the change of mind about Jesus. You can't hold on to your works for salvation. That isn't the repentance unto life. That isn't the belief that saves. The belief that saves is putting all of it to him. Now, how about you when you're listening to this? You know people that you know, hey, they're part of this organization. I don't care what organization you're saying. They might say, I'm a Lutheran, I'm a Presbyterian, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Catholic, I'm a Mormon, I'm a Jehovah's Witness, I'm a whatever. If their trust is in that, 
then their trust is in that plus Jesus. I'm not saying you can't be part of one of those churches, as we would call a denomination. Denominate means to just name. Even a non-denominational church, you might say, oh, I'm non-denominational, so I'm good. You can say you're part of that and not be saved. Okay? Denominate means to name. So if you've given it a name and that's the name you're trusting in, you're not trusting in Christ. Okay, so many denominations aren't teaching faith alone in Christ alone. They aren't teaching that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. They're saying, well, yeah, yeah, you got to believe in Jesus, but you also have to do this. And you have to be coming to our church or you're not saved. And if you're believing that, you aren't trusting Christ alone. You haven't had the change of mind about Christ and you aren't only trusting him. Romans 3.24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That follows Romans 3.23, which says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, we can be justified freely when we come to Christ. Romans 3.25, whom God hath set forth forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Faith in what he did on the cross. Christ died for you. Romans 3.26, to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. It doesn't say the justifier of him who goes to this church. Again, if you're trusting that plus Jesus, it isn't salvation. Anybody who says you have to be part of us to be saved is teaching a false Jesus. You have to trust Christ. After that, I don't care what your name is. I'm going to say, I I don't know of a lot of, there's a lot of those uh, organizations that I named that are not teaching that. And it's very clear in their doctrine. That doesn't mean that some people haven't only trusted Christ. But if you think that you have to be part of that organization or you won't go to heaven, you haven't trusted Christ. Titus 3, 7, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. We're justified by his grace. How? By putting trust in the Savior. That's how you have eternal life. It doesn't say you're justified by living in victory. It doesn't say you're justified by being baptized. It doesn't say you're justified by being part of a particular church. It says justified by his grace. Man justifies only the innocent, but God justifies only the guilty. Man justifies on the basis of merit on what man does, on what we do. But God only justifies by the Savior's merit. Do you have the Savior's merit today? Romans 4, 6, even as David also described describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. See, works would be being part of a particular organization, doing certain things to try to earn salvation. And part of repentance is having the change of mind to know that I only trust Jesus. That's what Martin Luther came to realize, that the just shall live by faith. By faith in who? Jesus. Romans 4, 7. What did David say? He said, saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Romans 4, 9. Cometh this blessedness up, then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. So see, Abraham, he was told to be circumcised. Well, when was he told? In Romans 4.10, how was it reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised. 
that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. See, here was the thing. The circumcision was something that Abraham's descendants would do. And it was passed to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. So it, it's, it's a sign of the people of God that would bring the Messiah. But he was saved before he was given that sign. That sign was about being shown that he would bring the Messiah through his line, the seed promise of Abraham. But he came to faith first. I know there are, the, there are those people who say in the Old Testament they were saved by uh, faith and works. And that is absolutely a false teaching. Abraham was saved before any works. And if he wasn't, then we would have to do those works as well to be saved. And that's what it talks about in Romans 4. Abraham simply believed the promise of God. Those who want to say you have to live in victory, did Abraham live in absolute victory? He had a lot of mess ups after he came to faith. So understand, it's not about us. It's about what Christ did. And he says, look and live. One of the most famous preachers, Charles Spurgeon, was saved when he went and heard a Methodist preacher uh, preaching. And he was a layman Methodist preacher, and he was preaching on that passage. And he said, look and live. And Charles Spurgeon said, I realized I needed to only look to the Savior to have eternal life. Praise the Lord that it's not anything we have to do. Because I'm going to tell you, if we had to do it, we'd be like Abraham and we'd mess a whole bunch of stuff up. And Abraham was a godly man, but he was godly because of his faith in the one who would send the Messiah. Job was a contemporary of Abraham. And Job said, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and then the latter day shall stand upon the earth. Job was looking to Jesus. He was looking forward to the cross. He knew that the cross would one day uh, happen, and he was looking for the one who could redeem him. May the Lord bless you with the reading of his word today.